So if you were to start learning a language right now from scratch, what would you need to know? Today, I have all the answers for you. Let's talk about that. What's up, you guys? It's Cole here, and I'm here once more to help you fulfill your language goals and to make more meaningful connections with other people. But let's just cut to the chase. Let's say you decide to learn a language today. Great! What do you do now? Well, the first thing you need to do is to have a plan of attack. Not to say that the language is your enemy, but it's really good to know a bit about it before you embark on learning. Know who you're getting in bed with. In other words, what is going to make it hard or easy for you? Does it have a lot of shared vocabulary with your language? Does it have a similar grammatical system? What's the word order like? Is it just like English where they have subject, verb, object? Or is it like Japanese where it's something completely different? And you need to know all this so that you know where to prioritize your time. Because if you're learning a language that's really similar to your native tongue, then you likely won't be required to study grammar at all if you don't want to. But if the grammatical system is completely different, then you may have to pay special attention to it. Know your enemy, and then watch from a point of dominance as you slowly dismantle it from the inside out. Next, figure out how you learn best and then take advantage of it. Are you more of an auditory learner, a visual learner, or something in between? Do you prefer listening and reading, speaking, or writing? Personally, I'm a very auditory learner, which means that when I listen to some sort of comprehensible input like a podcast or an episode in a TV show, I will end up picking up a lot of words and phrases here and there, which results in a huge passive vocabulary, but on the negative side, it also impedes my ability to speak because the only language that I'm surrounded by where I live is English, so opportunities to speak are kind of hard to come by, especially considering that a lot of my foreign friends live in different time zones. But that's just me. The important thing is that you personalize it for your own needs. But what I'm saying is, since I already know that I learn best by listening to things rather than speaking to others or writing in a journal, for example, I will be able to spend most of my time on that and therefore be able to learn to my maximum potential. In this stage, it's also important to try out different resources, because some are great at some things, but not so good at others. Regardless, in the description of all my videos, I put in all the resources that I've used for learning languages personally that I would recommend. So if you have no idea where to start, look in the description and check out some of the ones that I really like. Chances are, at least one of them will click with you. The next step is to know why you're doing this in the first place. Are you looking to get in touch with your heritage? Do you want to be able to travel to some specific area of the world and fluently converse with natives? Do you have someone to impress? Or are you content with just sitting at home understanding literature in its native language? It is crucial that you find some sort of what we call intrinsic motivation to keep moving forward. In other words, a source of motivation that comes from yourself and not from external tangible things like money. So for example, about three and a half years ago, I started to learn the Russian language. And one of the main reasons why I did it was because I wanted to understand Dostoevsky and Tolstoy in their native language. So I specifically bought this book, which is Crime and Punishment in Russian, and told myself that at the end of a couple years, I will be able to read this in its original script in its entirety. And that is exactly what I did. Now I use my knowledge of Russian to learn more about the amazing Russian people, culture, and history. So before you embark on a journey like that, know why you're doing it. My next tip is to cover your bases. Because let's be honest, there will be days where we just can't practice at all or we simply don't want to. And that's why we need to prepare to be able to practice in different ways. Of course, the very best practice that you can have is deliberate practice, which is when you sit down and consciously focus 100% of your attention on any given thing, in this case, the language. But this takes time, a lot of efforts, and you making the conscious decision to put aside everything else, sit down, and learn a bit of whatever language. But there are other types of practice that are a little more lazier, but can be almost as effective. So what I do is I carve out these little portions of my day that I can use to listen to a certain language just to refresh my vocabulary. So when I wake up, for example, I may turn on a podcast in French. And when I drive to school, I may turn on a podcast in Russian. And while I'm studying, I may listen to music in Spanish, and I think you get the idea. Make the language a part of your daily routine so that you never forget to learn just a little bit every day. I also like to keep a deck of flashcards on my phone so that if I really just forget to do anything, 
I'll always be able to look through at least 20 or 30 flashcards really quickly before I go to bed. My next pro tip is to learn the vowels of the language first. And notice I said the vowels and not every single letter in the entire language. This is because in any given language, there are only a few vowels to work with. And since vowels make up words, they're the foundation of learning the entire sound system of your language. So if you just take five or 10 minutes to look at the sounds of the vowels, you'll be saving yourself a lot of time down the road when you're sitting around looking at a book baffled at what you see trying to pronounce some word or another. I learned this tip from a professor of German at my local university. Who told us on the first day of class that the German vowels were A, E, I, O, U. So essentially you take the English vowels A, E, I, O, U and just kind of push them to the right a little bit. It sounds insignificant, but after about one or two weeks, my knowledge of German pronunciation was pretty good, considering that I didn't know much of the language. And above all, it all made sense to me. So this is a way of not putting too much pressure on yourself, only learning a few letters, setting that foundation for learning the rest of the system, and sparing yourself a lot of time. My next tip, if you're on some sort of deadline to learn one language or another, look for some flashcard packs on programs like Anki that say things like 2,000 or 3,000 most common words in X language. There are really smart people out there that have created these algorithms that sort through tens of thousands of pieces of comprehensible input in any given language, and then sort the words by frequency into a list that makes sense for you. So at the end, you end up with the most common one, two, three thousand words. But when you look for this, make sure that the examples are in sentences and have audio files attached to them. Because context is king when it comes to learning languages. One foreign word will not stick in your brain, but a whole sentence that has a whole situation attached to it will stick much better in your long-term memory. It's also important to put yourself in contexts that interest you. My next tip is to tailor your studies to your individual goals. And this goes hand in hand with knowing why you're learning the language in the first place. If you want to do more speaking than understanding, for example, then it's better to learn answers to common questions like what's your name, where are you from, what do you do for a living, why did you learn this language, and so on. But if you want to gain a really deep understanding of the language, your best bet is reading and listening at the same time. There are all sorts of fantastic resources out there that make this really easy for you. And my absolute favorite, by the way, not sponsored in any way, is Steve Kaufman's link, which I have in the description and I use almost every day. So be honest with yourself about what you really want to accomplish with the language and go from there. Next, you need to pace yourself. Learning languages takes time and is a very, very gradual process. And no matter how smart you are, it'll take you several months depending on the language just to be able to hold a simple conversation. Most likely, there are no absolutes in language learning. So don't be afraid to start off with really, really simple materials and then slowly increase the difficulty as you see fit. A good rule of thumb is that if you understand 95% of what you're reading and listening to, then it's time to bump it up a little bit. And on the flip side, if you're finding that you're understanding less than 70 or 60%, then you may want to drop back the difficulty just a little bit. You're not doing yourself any favors by listening to things that are too difficult for you. Next, forget everything that you know about your native language. Stop comparing the two, including the two cultures. Because most of the time you're really comparing apples and oranges, and it could even come across as disrespectful. Like saying that all Brazilians speak Spanish, for example. And then when people say that they actually speak Portuguese, you're like, eh, close enough. Don't do that. Instead, have an open mind, let the language influence your thoughts instead, and be one with the culture. Approach the whole process with a dose of healthy curiosity and know that it's okay to make mistakes. In fact, you should go out of your way to make as many mistakes as possible. Finally! Have fun and switch it up often. You will not get anywhere if you don't find a way to enjoy the language learning process itself. Because a lot of language acquisition actually depends on your mood, and there's scientific evidence to support this. Plus, if you're not having fun with it, then you'll probably think that it's not worth doing and ultimately give it up altogether. But I'm telling you, it can be super fun, you just need to find what works for you. And you do this by switching it up all the time, try different things, even if it's outside of your comfort zone. No. 
especially if it's outside of your comfort zone. Adhere to everything I said in this video and also add your own touches and you will be a pro language learner. And you'll finally be able to achieve everything that you want and impress all the babes. Hey Cole, do you learn languages to get girls or get girls to learn languages? Uh, no comment. If you're really cool, you might just want to check out two more of my videos here. Thank you all so much for watching. I actually had a really cool video planned for today, but the entire two hour long capture got completely corrupted and was thus unusable. So I recorded this video really quick in a panic after a little bit of planning, so I hope this is all right. I love you guys and I'll see you all very soon. Make sure to leave all of your feedback in the comments and any questions that you may add because I read all of them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.